Oh, you're yeah. watching the video slob show. Yeah, no. Come on. Do it. You're watching the video Bob oh, show. Oh, come on. Video okay, Bob. Shut up. Come on. Do it again. You're watching the video Bob with the Adika group, Stefan Adika. Right there, go. Stefan. Oh, fuck it. Do it right. Do it right. <laughs> That's it. You prick. There he is. Doyle. Where's Stefan? He ought to be here any minute now. <clears throat> We're doing a, uh, what is today? Tuesday? See you next Tuesday. Doing a Video Bob show on a Tuesday. Early, 11 o'clock. I got up fairly early, had a shower. Put some lotion on my head, shaved my balls. I'm ready for the week. <clears throat> We're ready to have a good time. Just had me a bowl of uh, raisin bran and some yogurt. Plan on having a good afternoon. <laughs> My new show, Bob Shits Vegas. <laughs> I don't know if you saw my latest episode where me and Joey went uh, on Bobby's Vegas. We went and had a burger over at Fountain Blue. <laughs> and I went into the bathroom. I go, this is the nicest bathroom I think I've ever been in. What a nice bath. I mean, if I had to poop, this is where I would do it. <laughs> I was just watching an interview with um, um, Tucker Carlson and what's his name? Cuomo. They were talking about, you know, like, hey, why were we so mean to each other, you know, and, and now we're friendly. Keyboard warriors are something that is, is something that is a relatively, relatively new thing. I mean, before the internet, you had to write somebody a letter. You had to troll somebody by licking a stamp, which was a thing. So the closest thing, that, you know, the keyboard warriors were people that worked in media that would write nasty articles in magazines, newspapers. Or maybe they did it on um, television shows. You know, you would have a food critic or a movie critic that would talk smack about an actor or a movie. And then... At some point, they'd find themselves in the same room with these people. And they had to avoid them, or they had to backtrack, backpedal. They had to, oh, well, you know, it's just entertainment. And this is a thing that's kind of been um, a reality, you know, for people that use the Internet for a long time now. So I don't like this. Uh, what's going on with my camera? I don't like this. Let me back it up. There we go. It was up my nose. So, I'm one of these people who, if, if you wanted to call it, let me fix this a bit. <clears throat> my room's a mess. I need to clean off my couch. I say that every time. I need to clean my room. I keep putting stuff on it. <laughs> I walk in, I throw the stuff on the couch because I don't know where else to put it. We all do this. But, um, you know, since the age of the Internet, and let's say the last 25 years, um, I don't know when you got on the Internet. I got on the Internet about 1994. I think Windows 95 was just coming out. When I read my first computer used Windows 3.1. So that's how far back I go. And I'm sure some of you go back further. Um. So, yeah, I mean, that's, gosh darn, 30 years. Holy heck. But it's still a pretty relatively new thing. Now, younger people have kind of always had it. It's always just been there. But I remember a time when I was in school, if you talked smack about somebody behind their back the next day in the schoolyard, well you're probably going to face off. Meet me by the stop sign, 3 o'clock, right, at the bus stop or whatever. And uh, you were going to smack each other in the face. I clearly remember getting into tussles at school over um, talking smack 
disrespecting. And now with the advent of anonymity. So what do we do about it, right? Um, how do we resolve this? I think that um, it all has to do with our letting people do it. Right? For instance, what I mean is, if somebody is using a fake name, a fake avatar, and you friend them, you allow them to exist, then you're perpetuating that world. I don't do it. When somebody tries to friend me and they've got some bullshit name and fake face, deny. Deny. Not interested. Here's another thing that I don't support. Right? This is something I think the entire internet viewing community is going to have to do to try to prevent it. Don't follow or watch or support either AI generated content or reconstituted bullshit. For instance, if you are watching reels or if you watch TikTok, you'll see people who just repost another video with their fucking head in the picture just watching it, reacting. Don't watch reaction videos. Don't watch videos of someone else watching a video where they've stolen a video and reposted it. Don't watch AI-generated content where they just put up some pictures and then the AI voice just talks over. Don't follow them. Don't give them a like and don't watch it. When that stuff comes up on my feed, I put do not recommend channel. I don't like it. I delete it. I, 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 I ban it. I block them. Don't let them perpetuate. I, and, and, you know, here on YouTube, for instance, um, each one, each thing that I post and create is automatically copyrighted. And if someone were to download and repost my content, I immediately get a flag. I get a, a message that says someone has reposted your content. And then I can choose to either have it taken down immediately, which would give them a copyright strike, of which if you get three of those, they delete your account. Or you can get a seven-day warning that gives them a message to take it down voluntarily. Whenever this happens to me, I go look at their page. If their page is primarily original created content, and maybe they were just sampling something of mine because they were reporting like news. Okay, for instance, I'll give you an example. Like, because my vi video with the gypsies has gone pretty viral, a lot of other people talking about scams has said, hey, and there's this guy in Vegas who, and they would show a little clip of it. I let that slide. But if I look at your page and everything you post is just reconstituted shit you stole from somebody, I'm striking you with everything I can get, and I will have your fucking page deleted. And they will write me letters, oh, Bob, I'm a big fan, why did you do that? Fuck you, you thief. Like, for instance, one of my channels is uh, Big Vin TV. I worked for Vinnie Paul. I created content for him. I made the music videos for Hell Yeah, and I made videos for Big Vin Records. And I still have that YouTube page. And people will just steal the content off of it and go put it on their drum page. And they're like, oh, but I'm a big fan. Well, if you're such a big fan, why are you ripping me off? I shot the video. I edited the video. I uploaded the video. I caretake the video. And then you're going to just steal it. Steal my revenue that I make money from. You're not a fucking fan. That's the opposite of a fan. Hey, I'm a fan. Let me rob you. And so as you become a creator of art and content, you start to understand why people like Lars Ulrich was so pissed off. If you're, you know, I make a, it's not my only living, but I make a mostly living on YouTube. I have been content creating since the early 90s before there was a YouTube. And before YouTube caught on, I was on other platforms. There was Real Player, remember Real? There was a couple other little video platforms that were starting to come out, and YouTube was just one of them. Nobody knew YouTube was going to be the biggest thing, and Google bought them and made them into the second largest search engine in the world. Okay, And so I get paid. I, you know, I do this because I like doing it, 
But make no mistake, people want to get paid. I like it when my phone bill gets paid, right? So unfortunately, the world runs on commercials. You drive down the street, you're going to see billboards. You put the, you start your fucking car now, and you get a commercial for the car you already bought on the screen. Ford, Cadillac. I turn that Maserati on. Maserati, Maserati. All these fucking Maserati logos pop up on all the screens. Yeah, I know. I'm in the car. I bought it. You're, you're, you're covered with advertisement everywhere you go. And all the data stealing that's going on. Everybody's worried about, oh, they're taking my data. They're taking my data. Th don't worry about it. All they're doing with the data is trying to figure out what you like so they can send you ads for it. That's it. That's it. That's their whole goal. The government's not watching you. They just want to know what you want to buy so they can make money off of it. So if you watch YouTube a lot, I recommend getting YouTube Premium. It's worth every penny to not have to see the ads. I've never seen an ad on YouTube. You know why? Because I don't. I pay whatever it is, 10 bucks a month. It's worth it. It's worth it. I'm on YouTube a lot. And uh, I don't have to see any ads. TikTok has gotten ruined with the ads. Okay, going back to my original thing that I was talking about is that basically um, keyboard warriors are people who, you know, they hide. Now, some of them are an anonymous, but some of them, you know who they are. I mean, just the other day, there was somebody saying some things on my, po on my podcast, making comments that they would not say to me in person. And they live just down the street from me. I see them all the time. And um, I'll tell you that um, almost never, almost never um, do people do this to me in person. I'm going to allow the, this question for just a second to change the subject just because so it says, are you still editing, uploading all the old videos of video, Vinny and Dime? I have a gazillion videos of Vinny and Dime. Here's the problem. There was never a moment of silence around Vinny or Dime that there was not music playing. And as you know, you can't put music on YouTube. The other thing is, every other word out of those guys' mouth was some shit you can't say on YouTube. I'm not saying that those guys were like racist, but in, you know, Texas in the 90s, Everybody was wearing a rebel flag something. All the Pantera merchandise had rebel flags on it. And there was various language that went along with that. And none of it can be put on YouTube. So I would have to edit the ever-loving fuck out of this video. Because you're going to have tons of music playing in the background... The N word, the F word, all kinds of F words. I don't mean just the one you're thinking. Just a lot of words that you can't say, things you can't show, titties, just stuff like that, all this fun stuff. Now, I mean, there's a lot of boring video I could post, but the kind of fun stuff you used to see on like Dime Vision or not even Dime Vision, like the Pantera videos. Yeah, there's stuff like that I could be post, but how am I going to post it? You know, how am I going to post it in today's woke world? I don't give a fuck. YouTube gives a fuck. I'm uncancelable. You can't cancel me. I don't work for anybody. Except for, I guess, YouTube. So the only people who can cancel me is Facebook, YouTube. They can take away my account. Right? And it's not my goal to go around hurting people's feelings. 
But anybody who hung out with those guys knows that that they affectionately and and in the same way that rappers use words like the N-word, they did the same because it was part of the vernacular of the time. Now, obviously, this changed in later years. But I clearly remember a time that it was totally acceptable to say that word around the general population. It was on television. Me and we were watching uh, Sanford and Son. He was using it on that show. I heard it on Good Times or whatever. I heard that word used on the Jeffersons on television. And it always got a big laugh and a big shock. But you will never hear that word on TV again. What is this? He says, I had no idea that sharing or reposting some content flatters you. Quite possibly it brings other people to your channel. I had no idea. How do you fucking not know that taking someone else's shit and reposting it isn't stealing? And, and this is what blows me away because sometimes I get that response from people when I flag their content and they go, oh, I'm just a big fan. I just wanted, I just wanted to, you know, prevent people from going to your channel and then have them go to my channel instead and then watch your shit that you created on my channel and then they're not going to watch it on your channel because they're watching it on my channel and then you're not getting paid for it, I'm getting paid for it. Or, or they go, I'm not even making money for it and, and whatever. And this is what's wrong with the world today. It's people, they're like, oh yeah, I just thought I could just take shit from the store and walk out the door with it. It's not stealing. You know, I'll just steal cable. I'll just download games. I'll just share serial numbers, blah, blah, blah. I didn't know it was stealing or it's, it's okay. It's not a big deal until it's your shit, until you become a creator, till you patent something and you're trying to sell it, until you trademark something and you're trying to own it, until you start making things. You know, and, and it, it's like what you do for a living. <clears throat> oh, thank you so much. Here's Karen. Bob, you should add your PP or Venmo under the description that appear in every show and all your channels. That way you get 100% of any donation. Um, you know, I'm not panhandling on here. There's a lot of creators that do that, that their, their whole thing is just panhandling the whole time. I, I don't want to panhandle to my audience, um, but, but I do appreciate it all, you know, it all adds up. Um, you know, in order for me to sit here and do this without going to work, <laughs> it is work, really. It's a job just like anybody else. I remember one time I was, not that I'm, uh, um, taken up for, for these guys, but I, I remember, um, you know, some of these preachers that make a lot of money, and somebody pointed out to me, they go, look, this guy is, um, you know, he's a content creator on television. He's, he's um, you know, he's putting on a TV show. People give him money. I, gotta, I, go, I guess you got a point there. He's got millions of people watching him for entertainment. Makes sense to me. Um, But yeah, I mean, when you put time and effort into something and you own it, you've created it. Here's the thing about it, right? Um, I am, I get this one little fuzzy on my nose. I keep seeing it or something. Um, when, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, okay. So I'm basically a professional plagiarist in my own right. Because I make replicas of movie cars and props that I didn't create. Now, people have pointed that out to me. They go, well, you're, you're basically making a living ripping off people's shit. I go, this is true. You're 100% right. However, uh, if it makes any sense at all, um, I have forged relationships with the people that I'm ripping off. And um, not officially like on paper, but I'm doing it with permission. And I don't want to name any particular names, but for instance, um, 
Okay, I'll name some names like Kevin Pike. He's the guy who built the original DeLorean time machine for the movie Back to the Future. Now, he was hired by Back to the Future to make it, so he doesn't like own it, right? But he's the one who like made it, right? Him and his team. And I'm good friends with Kevin. <clears throat> and I do things for, you know, I do nice things for him and things, and he's, he's cool with me. Bob Gale, who wrote the movie, I've, I've, you know, he's cool. You know, I'm actually an NBC Universal Studios vendor. I built the car that's at Universal Studios. They know who I am. They're cool with it. Does that make sense? Now, somebody said priest. Right? I have a Judas Priest tribute band. I'll have you know that I did a rock and roll fantasy camp with the band Judas Priest in 2017. Myself, Rob Halford, Scott Travis, Ian Hill, Richie Faulkner, all got up on stage together at the Whiskey A Go Go and performed Judas Priest songs together. And I asked Rob, per, while we were backstage, I said, you know, I've always wanted to do a Judas Priest tribute band, but I wouldn't do it unless I had your permission. So you've seen me perform. What do you think? And he says, you know, oh, I think you're great. I think you should do it. There's lots of Judas Priest bands out there. I wouldn't mind at all. You do a good job representing the band. And I said, thank you. And it, we, he gave me a hug. And then he grabbed my ass. And then we made out for a little while. No, I mean, he was, <laughs> I'm just kidding. He was a really nice guy. He was super sweet. And, and I said, okay, well then if you think, if you say it's okay, then I'm going to do it. Which by the way, our first show here in Las Vegas will be next Friday. Before I make the official announcement, I need to get the contract done. But we will, we're, we sh we're slotted to play next Friday the 22nd here in Las Vegas. Turbo Lover, my Judas Priest band. Um, who texted me? Hippie wants something. I have to answer this. Dude doesn't pay attention. So keyboard warriors out there are people who got balls when they're at home and nobody's around and they're not standing in front of you. <clears throat> and I talk about this all the time because I just told you I can't announce it until I have it confirmed 100%. Just calm down. It'll be in Las Vegas. Um, just down the street from here. Do you pay royalties? No, I don't have to pay royalties because live music doesn't count. That's why K.K. Downing, who's no longer in Judas Priest, can, who sold all of his publishing, goes out with K.K.'s Priest and sings his own songs. That's why, you know, tribute bands cover bands like, you know, the Supreme Court has determined that, that, that live performance just doesn't count. Now, David Lee Roth goes out and sings Van Halen songs wherever he goes. Nobody gives a shit. <clears throat> it's when you um, publish and print and distribute and sell these things. But live performance, you can do whatever you want, pretty much. Nobody could stop you from whistling a song. You know, if you're walking down the street, you know, whistling a tune, it's no different than me singing Turbo Lover. Right? You know, like you're just walking down the street, you know, and then like the copyright police show up and go, you got to pay us for that melody. Every single day, I get called by this number from the ASPCA. Let's call. Let's call, see what happens. Is Sarah McLaughlin going to be there? Every day they call. Every single fucking day from New York City. Let's just do this on the air. Why not? Thank you for calling SDNA Teleservices. We are an outbound call center representing a variety of charitable organizations. If you'd like to leave a message, please include your name and phone number after the tone. 
If you would like to be added to SDNA's internal do not call list, please leave a message with your phone number and we will process your request. Thank you for calling. Please record your message after the tone. Press star to discard the recording or press any digit to end the recording. Every single fucking day, you call my phone every fucking day. And then you get blocked. Take a hint. Read the room. Fuck off. (laughs) Every fucking day. Look, yesterday. Look, there it is. The day before that. Fuck off. Let's go check my other robo calls. I have a thing called Robo Killer. Let's check. This could be a whole channel, just me calling them blocked, scam, block, scam, donation request, block, scam, block, scam, 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 block, scam, block, 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 scam, block, scam likely. Hi, is this scam likely? I'd like to talk to you today. Fuckers. <laughs> I'm in one of those moods today. Um, let's see here. Poor little puppies. What a mean man. It's a scam. Nobody's helping any puppies over there. So, yeah, the algorithms on, uh, on YouTube are so strong that, like, even when I... Um, When we play, when we rehearse live, it detects all the songs. Melody sounds like breaking the law. Demonetized. I answered this question earlier. Maybe I didn't. So do you pay royalties for producing the DeLorean Time Machine, Ghostbusters, Blues Brothers? Um, So here's the truth about that. Back to the Future doesn't own the DeLorean. They just use the DeLorean in their movie. They don't own the DeLorean. DeLorean's out of business. So DeLorean doesn't own DeLorean. Even though the people in Houston who bought the name DeLorean think they own DeLorean, they don't. They can't stop me from buying a car and then doing shit to it. Cadillac doesn't own the 1959 Cadillac hearse any longer. Matter of fact, the people who made that hearse aren't even around. Um, Blues Brothers, they bought an old police car, 1974 Dodge. They don't own Dodge. And Dodge doesn't even have that car. Shit's 50 years ago, that car, 74. You understand? That's why they don't use un, you know, like now when they make a movie, they use a car or something that's sponsored. So they don't own it in the first place. I don't owe Back to the Future. They took a DeLorean and and attached a coffee grinder and shit to the top. They they don't own any of the stuff they attach to it. So there's no the only thing they own is the logo Back to the Future. I don't use the logo Back to the Future. I don't build the Back to the Future car. I build a DeLorean time machine. What does that mean? You see what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Nobody could stop you from taking your car and doing shit to it and selling it. You can go buy a brand new car. Ferrari actually has tried to stop people from modifying their brand. You know, yeah. Uh, NBC, Universal... They don't own Knight Rider. Matter of fact, they don't even own the trademark to Knight Rider because I know a guy who bought it. Isn't that crazy? They don't own Knight Rider. How funny is that? I know a guy who bought the trademark because they let it slip. Matter of fact, the same guy bought other trademarks that he he uses. Matter of fact, one of the first customers who ever bought my um, first car that I ever built what he did for a living was he bought old expired trademarks and then put them back out. Gene Simmons actually owns, you're not going to believe this shit. Gene Simmons discovered that certain things were not trademarked, like the dollar sign. The dollar sign was not trademarked. That motherfucker bought the trademark for the dollar sign. So when he does money bag soda and all that, and uh, his hat, his logo, money bag, 
he owns, <laughs> and he also bought the pound sign and a bunch of other ones. So, like, you know, I got a hat, one of his hats over there. He owns the trademark to the dollar sign, Gene Simmons. And that's why when he spells his name, his S is a dollar sign. I mean, you can't tell, you can't tell on this. I have one of his bottle caps here. It's too small, but anyway. So um, you can do a Judas Priest tribute band, and you didn't, don't have to own the rights. That's right. But again, I explained this earlier. I'm not going to repeat myself just because you didn't watch it. So you have to rewind. Where's Stefan at? I thought he'd have been on here by now. Calling me up. So, yeah, you know, I was thinking about keyboard warriors, and these are people that, uh, you know, that was the original plot today. But um, what is it about that? What is it about certain people that they find courage when they're alone, when they're not faced with actual danger? And... Um, there's just a lot of, you know, there's been a couple of times, like there was this guy in England used to relentlessly bust my balls. And lo and behold, I found myself in England in the same room with this clown. And I go, hey, look who it is. And he's like, oh, no, I'm your biggest fan. Oh, let me take a picture. I'm just kidding. Oh, we're just goofing around. That's how we are, right? Yeah, right. Well, so I can't buy you a pint. As soon as I get back home, here comes Mr. Chowderhead. As soon as I'm 5,000 miles away, standing right, right in front of me, sucking my dick. Just, you know, and so what we need to do as a society, if we're going to really do things in a collective, is we have to scarlet letter these people. We have to shun them. We have to let them know that we're not going to let them get away with it. And how you do that is you got to block them. You got to, you can't let them get the view. You don't let them get the click. So that's why I'm saying, like, in order to change the algorithm of YouTube, TikTok, and social media, when you have AI generated content or people that only repost stolen shit, don't watch it. You've got to block them. You've got to delete them. You've got to thumbs down them. You, they've got to be let known that we're not going to do it. Because what you end up with is a bunch of stale, you know, shitty content. I'll give you an example. Like, I like to watch Joe Rogan, and I like different podcasters and different things on YouTube. And sometimes I'll start to click on something, and I go, oh, it's a Joe Rogan clip or something like that, for instance, right? And I'll realize that some, it's not his page. It's some other page that's just reposting his shit. Right? And so I will then click on the video to not recommend that channel. And I will block that channel. I don't want them rec... You know, because YouTube's going, oh, this guy likes to watch Joe Rogan. So they start sending me Joe Rogan shit. But I don't want Joe Rogan shit that's not from Joe Rogan. Right? I don't want to watch somebody else's ripped off version. I want him to get the view because I'm a fan. I understand how this works. Somebody's asking me about fair use. What's my, where did that go? What's my opinion of fair use? I don't know. I don't know what you call fair use. There's certain stuff, you know, that, that is, that is, um, a lot of times people go, well, it's all about the intent. I think it's all about the profit and the loss. Is there profit and loss? It's just, it's, everything's about money. Just like Gene says, it's not show friendship, it's show business. Right? Any band that starts telling you this shit about, uh, you know who told me this was Adam the Woo. We were riding around. I hope he doesn't mind me telling the story. But he, Adam, uh, the reason 
Adam didn't want to doesn't want to sell merch and shirts and stuff and things like that cuz he's missing out on a huge but one day I think he's going to regret not taking advantage of his fans. <laughs> but he the man has integrity. But he said he said, you know, it hit me like a ton of bricks. He goes, I was watching uh an interview of Gene Simmons where these other these other bands were like, you know, yeah, man, we're not sellouts, you know, we're not going to be like Kiss and just put our, you know, and sell toys and all this stuff. And Gene Simmons says, "Well, if you're a band and you have a T-shirt, you're Kiss. The minute you put, the minute you have a logo, and you try to protect it, the minute you try to sell it, the minute you slap it on a album cover, the minute you put it on a T-shirt." The minute you charge for a ticket to see you, you're KISS. Just because we do it better than everybody else doesn't mean we're doing anything different. So if you're a punk band, anti-establishment, but you've got a logo on a t-shirt, you got a patch, you got a charge at the door, you think you're different than KISS? You're just a shitty version of it. That's all. It's the same thing. Do you have a trademark logo? Is it on a t-shirt? Did you put it on a record? Did you trademark and copyright your publishing? Are you getting paid for that record? Right? Your kiss. Oh, people coming to your shows with, you know, officially licensed patches for the Misfits, you know, or whatever, for the Sex Pistols. You're going to sit there and tell me that you're anti capitalism, right? Jello Biafra, you know? Is that is Dead Kennedy trademarked? I'm just wondering, right? Is that an officially licensed Dead Kennedy shirt you're selling at the merch booth? Right? You're trying to tell me that you aren't the same? You're just because you're a failure at it doesn't mean you're not the same. It's the same. So that being considered, you know, people who are stealing shit online. It's the same. It's all fun and games until it's your shit. So everybody thinks Napster's fun and cool. Thought, they thought that was all fun and cool until they are the person getting ripped off. You know, like if you're a talentless loser and you're still in Metallica's music, you think it's hilarious. And you're like, oh, fuck those guys. Unless, of course, you went through the trouble of writing a song, recording a song, publishing a song, spent years and years trying to get it out there, and then... It's a record, and then it's in the stores. You know, the fr I remember going to Best Buy and Walmart, Target, FYE, and all that kind of, and seeing the records that I made, the DVDs that I made for Big Ben Records, and seeing it on the store shelves. And, and it started to kind of hit me. I'm like, you know, if people were stealing this album or stealing this record or downloading it, I found pirate copies of my shit. I remember how it made me feel. I remember I was on Discogs. You know what Discogs is for record collectors, right? And I found a vinyl of Rebel Meets Rebel. A vinyl. We never made a vinyl of Rebel Meets Rebel. And I called up Vinny. I go, Vince, um, did you do some kind of deal in Italy for a vinyl Rebel Meets Rebel? And he goes, no. I go, well... I'm on Discogs right now, and they're selling vinyl issues of Rebel Meets Rebel. And he looked at it, he goes, hey, buy a couple of them. <laughs> I want to see it. So we, I bought like two copies of it, gave him one, I got one. And we were like, this is kind of cool, we have a vinyl copy of Rebel Meets Rebel. But you know what pissed me off about it as the guy who made that CD? Is that I go, man, they didn't even... They didn't even remaster it for vinyl. It sounds like shit. They didn't even get the scan. You know, like they didn't use the original print files that I have, so they just scanned in the CD and then shittily reprinted it. So this thing looked like shit. So they made a, a crappy copy. So if you played it, you go, man, this sounds like dick. Because it wasn't remastered for vinyl, it's got a different sound. They didn't use my master print files to make it. You know, had we put it out, it would have come out good. You know, so 
And I'm sitting there looking at my shit copied. And I'm like, man, that sucks. So if it ever happens to you, I mean, the closest thing that maybe you don't work in the entertainment industry, but maybe you're at work and you come up with some great new concept of how to do things at the job, and then like somebody else at your work just steals it and gets all the credit for it, and they get paid for it, they get a promotion, and you get nothing. Well, how would you feel? It's the same. It's the same. You know, I actually own a trademark to a clothing company. I have Devil Brand Clothing and then Devil Hats. It's actually D period evil because there's so many trademarks for the word devil. So I did D, D period evil, but the period was real small. So it just looked like, like devil if you read it. And if you watch my television show Screen Machines, now available on Tubi and Amazon, um, you, uh, I, you'll notice I always wear this hat with the spikes on it, right? So... I had trademarked that, and we were going to sell these hats with the spikes on it. And I had made a deal with Hot Topic. And we were going to do a thing with, I forget how many hats. It's like a 1,000 hats on all their stores. They were, each store was going to get a couple hats. But there was like a buyback clause that I'd have to buy them back after a certain period of time. And um, we started talking. Uh, you know, I met with this counsel about the whole thing and they said look here's what you're going to have to understand as soon as these hit the market if they're popular at all um they're just going to be copied they're going to be at every flea market they're going to be at the gas station so if they turn out to be huge they're just going to be copied and there's nothing you're going to be going to be able to do about it they're going to make these in china and they're going to be sold everywhere and you're not going to be able to stop it and that's why they have these buyback clauses because you're going to be selling the hat for like 35 dollars and then they're going to be 10 bucks at 7-Eleven. So you need to be prepared for that. So you need to sell as many as you can as, as quickly as you can. And you need to try to strengthen the brand. And people need to want to buy it because they want the actual brand. But the brand is going to be copied as well. And so what are you going to know about, what are you going to do about that, you know, to, to make it, because your hat's pretty, you know, simple to make. It's an embroidered hat with spikes on it. Okay? You know, there's nothing really proprietary that you're doing here. And so I decided not to do the deal because he goes, the risk here is you're probably going to end up with all your own hats and you're not even going to be able to sell them for as much as it costs to make them. So I decided not to do it. I was like, you know what? Forget it. Why is Hot Topic a blast from the past? Hot Topic is in every mall that you've been to. They still are there. You just don't go there anymore. Do keyboard warriors frighten you? I don't know about frighten me. Um, they don't frighten me. Um, it's just that, um, what's the word I'm kind of, I think it's not that they frighten me. I just noticed something laying here. It's a sticker up from my phantom. I forgot to go put it on there. Um, As someone who wants to do the right thing in this world, and who's to say what the right thing is, but I wouldn't say that I'm a social justice warrior. I would just say that I am I'm trying to think of the best way to say this. I don't want to get in trouble. If I was out in public, and I saw some real injustice going down, and there was, and I could do something about it, I'm the guy that would. I'm the guy that's going to attack the robber in the store. I'm the guy that's going to pick up the old lady that fell down. I'm the guy that's going to pull over and harass the street scammers like the gypsies. I'm the guy that's going to pull over and help you because you're a broke down on the side of the road or whatever. I'm the guy that's going to pull you out of a ditch with, with my truck. Um, 
I'm the guy who's going to stand up for somebody who, well, okay, like I'll give you an example. We, we, were, uh, we were in England. We were in Heathrow Airport, me and Rachel, and there was this trans woman person. Now, I don't think I've hidden my uh, politics on how I feel about things. However, this man was just harassing the trans woman standing in line. Calling the person a freak and the F word and saying you're, you know, you're disgusting. And that person was like, you know, excuse me, you know, I'm a lady. And he's like, you're not a lady, you're, you're disgusting. So I kind of have kind of mixed emotions about the whole thing. But I just said, hey, bro, why don't you chill the fuck out? He looked at me like, what? And I said, hey, why don't you pick on me? Pick on me, chatterhead. I'm from Dallas, Texas. What's that supposed to mean? What it means is I will fuck you up, right? Pick on me, dude. And she's like, yeah, thank you. I'm like, you shut up. Pick on me, motherfucker. Come on. You want to get on this flight? Or you want to catch another? You're going to catch a flight today. It's going to be in a fucking air ambulance. You open your mouth again. That's what I do in public. That's Rachel, right? Now, at the same time, <laughs> you know, if I, I don't support the, the trans rights movement at the same time, I don't. I, I think that all people should be, um, just do whatever you want. But as far as a quote movement goes, when it comes to changing you know, the way our society works for this minority of mentally ill people. I'm not for that either. But I'm not for anyone being bothered. Live and let live. But see, my problem, uh, the reason I'm hypocritical about it is, is live and let live doesn't mean that you get to tell me how to live my life now because you've made some life changes. You don't get to change my language, my behavior, and the way all society has worked since men crawled the earth because you are in the middle of your own sexual fetish in public and then you want me to role play with you because you're pretending to be a woman or a dog or a puppy or a whatever. I'm not role playing with you, but I'm certainly not going to discriminate against you or treat you poorly or deny your rights to to live or do whatever you want. Like you have every right to be and do whatever you want. Just don't involve me. Now was it, it wasn't any of my business what this guy was doing, but I felt at the time the right thing to do was to let this guy know that he wasn't gonna just bully this person in public because he didn't like him. I don't go around bullying people I don't like. I just leave them alone. I just ignore them. I'm like, you know, go do whatever you want. I don't give a shit. I don't care. That was my whole take on the whole like mask thing and the, and the uh, injection thing. It's like, go wear a mask. I don't care. Don't make me wear one. I don't care what you do. Just leave me alone. Right? But there's people on the other side that would say, well, listen, your compliance or non-compliance is, is a problem for us. You know, like, where, where does it end? If somebody is standing in line next to me farting, they're like, hey, man, I'm just living my life. I go, yeah, but I have to smell your farts. So, and, and this is... This would be the environmentalist's angle about people who drive big gas-guzzling cars or 
or buy plastics or or a vegan that's mad at me for wearing leather and eating cows. So everybody has their own perspective on who's doing right and wrong and how it affects them or the overall environment. And so we have to try to find that middle ground between all of those things. And that's, that's the hard thing uh, that we all have to find within ourselves. Where, where is that line? But the one thing that I've, I've understood always is that when you're face to face with people, it's way easier usually, especially when you're alone with someone. You could take any two people, take a Palestinian and an Israeli and put them in a jail cell together with one spoon, one bowl, and one bed. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or maybe to make it a little more fair, make it one of them is a male and one of them is a female. And watch them come out of that thing a year later married. What I've noticed about a lot of places, what they're doing is they're just making both of their restrooms unisex. So if you go into a small diner or a place like that, where they have two restrooms, they used to be man and women, and they both just have toilets in them, they will usually um, just make them both unisex, which is fine, which is the way it should be. Look, it's Jared lurking over here. He could tell you about some keyboard warriors. What have you been up to? I haven't heard from you in forever. Used to be my bestest friend. I haven't heard from you in months. Where are you at? Mr. Busy over here. Ain't got time for Bob. Jared has definitely suffered a lot of keyboard warrior bullshit. And, um, you know, Jared's a lot like me that he's self-promotional. He's uh, adventurous. He gets out there and does stuff. Guys that are like us who put paint targets on our back, well, people start throwing rocks at us, trying to hit the target. Because basically by succeeding, you're challenging everyone that's beneath you. They all want to pull you down to their level, but that's because you're above them. And uh, you just have to not fall for it, and you have to not. You know, because you, you know what I found, and Jared probably would agree with me on this. If you ever do respond to a troll, like if, if I go into my comment section on a YouTube video and I respond to one of these trolls, they're like, oh my God, I can't believe you actually responded to me. Oh my God, I'm such a big fan. I was just kidding. <laughs> That's what they do every time. It's so funny. They just want attention. But don't give it to them. Don't read the comments. I do read my comments, but I, it's because I genuinely care, and I'm, I'm just, you know, you have, I, I, always, I always think it's funny when they go, oh, he's so down to earth. What does that mean? <laughs> We're all here. Everybody's down to earth. Some people are just dicks because they've, they've been, you know, like, when you meet a celebrity that's a real dick, it's because they just don't know how to handle the trolls that they run into in their life. You know, being around the guys from KISS, I've learned this more than anything because here you have a band that's gone through a diff different lineup changes. You know, they've had a couple of drummers, a couple of guitar players. And I was there at the last show, December 2nd, Madison Square Garden, and I'm standing next to this fucking idiot who keeps yelling out going, Ace! Ace! And I go, you know that's Tommy Thayer, right? Ace hasn't been in the band in like 20 years. He's like, yeah, I know. I'm just fucking with him. I said, so you, what you're telling me is you paid $800 for this seat to come to the very last Kiss show so you can yell ace at Tommy Thayer, who cannot hear you, by the way. He 
He's like, oh, I think it's fine. And I'm like, you don't even know who you're standing next to, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and these people exist and they walk among, among us and it's like they just didn't get punched in the face enough that's what Mike Tyson said you know there's a lot of people out there with opinions that don't realize that they, they should be you know they're gonna I don't know what the quote was something about they don't get punched in the face enough so I don't know. But um, Keyboard Warriors is going to be something that all of us deal with it. You don't have to be famous to deal with it. It happens just everywhere. There's people out there that just... Um, and, and by the way, me saying what I just said about getting punched in the face, I'm 100% aware of the things that I say, and I'm 100% cool with confronting you face to face. Okay? Doesn't, I'm not going to punch you in the face. I'm not going to let you punch me in the face. I recently had one of these situations, right? Um, oh, this is what, what, what is it, Chris? He said, he said, everyone's got a plan until they get punched in the face. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I would not want to get punched by Mike Tyson. That's somebody I would speak respectfully to, 100%. There's this long... I thought about making a, like, a really detailed video about all this because there's the only negative stuff that's out there on the internet, as far as I know, is about this interaction I had with these fans of Ghostbusters. This happened back about 2011. It's a long, long story. Maybe I'll tell it. This isn't necessarily the forum, but um, and it, well, actually, it goes. It, it all talks about what we were talking about today about plagiarism and stealing and all of that. It's all part of it. So you know, I used to make the Ghostbuster Proton packs, right? I had a couple of guys that used to help me out around my shop. A guy named Chiago and a guy named Rain, and they were Ghostbuster fans. They would dress up like Ghostbusters and stuff. And uh, they lived together in an apartment, and they had a hard time coming up with the money and stuff. And so, um, so Thiago hits me up one day. He goes, hey, man, I got a Ghostbuster Proton Pack shell that was, like, it's from the screen-used molds, you know. Goes, really? And he goes, yeah, I paid 700 bucks for it. If you want to give me the money for it, I'll sell it to you. I go, well, that's a lot of money. What's, tell me the story about this thing. He goes, well, here's the story. A guy named Ross Arbuckle who's a Ghostbuster fan and a prop builder, does a great job of doing stuff, wandered into a studio called HMS Studios out in California and saw this thing hanging on the wall. And they said, yeah, we were hired to make those for Sony for the Universal Studios um, live action stunt show. So they gave us one of the originals and we broke it down. We made molds of it and we uh, made these for it. And that's just one of the pulls out of it. And we kept it as a souvenir. And he bought it from them. Took it over to his friend Sean Bishop's house. So Sean Bishop is a well-respected Ghostbuster and prop builder. Works for uh, DreamWorks and stuff like that. He's well-known. And uh, he posts on his Facebook a picture of the thing, bragging about how they have this screen-used shell, and they're gonna, they've matched it up. It's correct, and they're going to make molds of it. So Sean and Ross start recasting this thing and selling it to their friends. Chiago bought one. So I said, dude, give me this dude Ross's number. I call Ross up. This is 2011. I say, hey, man, tell me the story of this thing. And he confirms the story I just told you. That's how I, got the that's how I learned about it. He told me. I said, well, here's the deal then. If that's the case, then this is the screen use thing. So you don't own it. He goes, well, no. Well, what are you saying, Bob? I go, well, you and Sean have recast it and started selling it. So if I were to recast this and started selling it, I would be no different than you, right? Like, you don't own it. So we're all stealing it from the studio. HMS doesn't own it. It belongs to Sony. And unless they stop us from making it, it's ours to take, right? And Ross says, well, I wish you wouldn't because I found it first. And I go, well, that's not how this works, Ross. You're, you can't tell me not to steal the stuff you stole. 
There's no honor among thieves, as they say. So, however, if you'd like to work out a deal and give me permission to copy it and work together with me, my shop, I have a 5,000 square foot shop. I can make tons of these. Well, let's work something together. He goes, I don't want to work something together. I want you to not do it. I go, look, I don't need you to tell me whether I can do it or not. I can do it. I'm offering to do the right thing by you, but you don't want to do that. So I'm just going to do it without you. So he was very upset with me. So I, we made them, we sold them, and the guys on Ghostbuster fans were pissed because he's friends with all those people. Him and Sean are friends with the guys that run the GB Fans Net, uh, page. So they banned me from the page, and if you say my name, they will just slander the ever-loving shit out of me. They got like 10 pages of just completely made-up stuff. They just made it up. Accusing me of every kind of thing. So the only thing I ever copied was that thing, right? But they tried to accuse me of copying all this other stuff, which is stupid because it's all really easy to make. And uh, I go, look, I have all the original parts for this. But I don't know what you're talking about. Like we, I can, I've shown all the wooden bucks for all my original parts. They tried to claim that I copied all these things, but I didn't. But whatever, it doesn't matter. Looking back on it, I wish I had not done it because it caused more strife than it was worth. But at the time, it seemed like the thing to do because I did sell a lot of these. So recently, I ran into this dude, Ross. There was a Halloween party this last October through, through by one of my friends who hired Ray Parker Jr. And he, you know, he has a Ghostbuster car that I built for him. So this, friend, this guy, Ross, and his friends came from California to come to this party. And there they were. And I went up to Ross. I go, Ross, hi, I'm Bob. Put out my hand. He pretended like he didn't even see me. He pretended like I wasn't there. He wasn't ready for to talk to me. A little bit later on, after he had a few drinks in him, he did approach me. And he said, you know what? I do want to talk to you about this. And he told me how hurt he was. You know, that he... And then he started telling me, you know, I, I, I do, uh, you know, karate or kickboxing, whatever it is he does, you know, wrestling. And he goes, you know, I take out my anger on, you know, and I was, there was a time I was so mad at you, I wanted to break your jaw or break your nose or whatever he said to me. And I said, well, I'm really sorry, Ross. I'm sorry that I, I caused you this pain. You know, I, I remember calling you and trying to work something out with you and, and you were just being, you know, he says, yeah, well, you were very rude to me. I go, well, you were being very arrogant to me. You know, the truth of the matter is you don't own the thing, right? And he goes, no, I don't own it, but just the way you talk to me telling me you don't need me. I go, well, I don't. I don't need you. I was trying to work something out with you amicably, but you were being, just like you're being right now, very arrogant and violent, telling me you're going to break my jaw. And he's like, I could break your jaw right now. And I go, you could, but you wouldn't make it out of this room alive. I mean, the guy that invited me to this party, there's half of the, the, the sheriff is here, a bunch of cops are here, lawyers are here, you know, my friends are here, and I don't leave the house unprotected. So it would be very bad for you to lay a hand on me. I'm just saying, like that, I would highly recommend you don't. I'm trying to be friendly with you. I'm trying to be amicable with you. I'm trying to. It was a long time ago. I'm trying to put out an olive branch here. It's water under the bridge. You're a professional. I'm a professional. I don't make it. I haven't made these things in years. I mean, you don't make them, you know, either. And he was just trying to. Act like a badass. And I was there with two friends that tower over me. And they had my back. But I had my own back. You know, this guy could have, you know, I'm not saying that I'm some badass. You could, I'm sure, punch me in the face. It would suck. But then there's going to be repercussions for that. Right. You're not going to get away with it scot free. <laughs> that... Yeah. Not the exact friends I hang out with, but, you know. I do have some friends. No, I had these two friends that were, they're like 6'5", they were both, and 300 pounds, they were both standing next to me. <laughs> and I had people that were there, you know. But I could take care of my own. But the point is, is this guy, 
I mean, I give him credit for having balls to stand up to me. He was mad at me, and he and I said, "You deserve to be mad at me." I I I came in and pissed on your post hosties over here. But what do you want to do about it? Now we can we can be we can be enemies or we can be friends. You know what I was trying to do in 2011 is what I'm trying to do now, and say like, look, um, it, it doesn't always have to go that way. That's your choice. You could have worked with me and benefited. We could have been a team. You know. In your life, you're going to run into competition. And simply being mean to them isn't going to make them go away. You know how they say that, you know, keep your friends close and your enemies closer? And you don't have to be fake about it. I could say, listen, you're my competition, you're my enemy. I think the best thing for us to do is to work together instead of against each other. Because we're both a force to be reckoned with. So rather than undercut each other and water down our own market and cost each other money, let's figure out how we work together. I mean, you can learn this from watching The Godfather or, or, or The Art of the Deal or, or you know, any book about war. So these are things that you learn as you get older. But this guy, you know, he didn't want any of that. One of the things I've learned about show business, for instance, never fuck over people on the way up because you'll see them again on the way down. You know, that's a, that's a true thing. The guy that's washing your car might be your boss one day if you're not careful in, in, in this business. So, you know, especially in LA, everybody out there, you know, no matter what they're, oh, I'm just working at, at, uh, Applebee's right now while I'm writing scripts, but one of them might kick. You never know. <laughs> that happens all the time. So, um, Anyway, but the keyboard warriors out there are very angry people that are almost all, always failures. Because I've said this a million times before, the people at the top don't compete, they collaborate. And that's just what I was just talking about just now. When you get to the top, you don't have to compete, you collaborate. You know, Ford and Chevy, I guarantee you, do work together on certain things. Coke and Pepsi, McDonald's, Burger King, you know what I mean? They, uh, they'll acquire one another. They'll partner with one another. Like if Google sees your thing as a threat, they're going to buy you. You come up with something else, you know, you'll notice that all the other search engines are gone. You know, sometimes a company will buy another company just to put it out of business. Because, you know, you'll hear all the time about some huge corporation you know, oh, Google bought this other company, and then they went out of business. It was cheaper to buy them and put them out of business than it was to compete against them. So, but keyboard warriors are people who are, they're cowards. They can't, you know, they're afraid to show you who they are, what they are. Whenever you meet them in person, or whenever you out them, you know, you'll find that nine times out of ten, they're mostly going to be mentally ill for, for most of the part. Um, I mean, you know, tards are everywhere. <laughs> I mean, they, they just are. And I'm about to piss off a bunch of my fans right now. Here we go. Prepare to be offended. Anybody who's one-dimensional in their fandoms um, scares me. Because I'm in this world, right? I'm in the world of Back to the Future, 
Ghostbusters, Knight Rider, Kiss, the Blues Brothers, like this clown. Now, Paul gets a pass because there's his profile picture. It's just a him. It's just a picture of him with his stupid car. Did Video Bob build that car? Now, the thing is, his job is being a Blues Brother, so he makes his living at it. So he promotes himself as a Blues Brother. That's fine. I don't have a problem with that. He has an at least a, a monetized agenda. Okay? He gets a pass. What I'm talking about is every day I get friend requests by the thousands. Well, I don't get thousands a day. But, I mean, I get lots of friend requests. And I don't have that many friends on my friends on my Facebook. And the reason is is because I don't want these people in my life. They scare me. And the first clue is going to be the profile picture. If their profile picture is like Ace Freely, Gene Simmons, them painted up as Kiss, whatever, or they're dressed as Marty McFly, or as a Ghostbuster, or it's a picture of Dimebag, you know, or, you know, Cowboys from Hell, or what, whatever the thing is. I'm just like, oh, brother, here we go. How about no? These are the people that, you know, you got these KISS fans. They, their whole life is KISS. They sleep on KISS bed sheets. They, every post they make is KISS. KISS, 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 KISS. Or it's Back to the Future, or it's Ghostbusters, it's whatever. They're just one-dimensional. It's their whole life. So, I, I'm just like, deny. Unless it's somebody... I just kind of need to let in because of whatever reason. But very rarely do I let those people slide. Because I know that moving forward, all the conversation is going to be about that thing. They're not interested in me. They're just using me as a tool for information or to get closer to somebody else. You know, I know when a KISS fan is, you know, like... You know, oh, they're such a huge fan of the way I did the announcement. Right off the bat, I, I let some of these, one of these people be a friend. Hey, can you ask Eric a question? Hey, can you forward this to Gene? Oh, for fuck's sakes. You clown. Somebody friends me and they're dressed like Marty McFly. Hey, Bob, I got a question about the little DeLorean. Here we go. I just, you know what I mean? I'm just like. You know, and there's people that I know that are into the uh, uh, car world, and every single post they make is of their car. Their profile picture is their car. Every picture they post is their car. Their name is their car. I was like, fuck, dude, a car you bought or whatever is like your whole identity. That's who you are. That's what's on your tombstone. A car. A band. A movie you saw. What the fuck is wrong with you? So there's people out there that are listening to this going, shh. shh. I get it. If, you, if it's your job, if it's your business, I, that makes sense to me. You know, people bust my balls for being self-promotional. I go... I'm the product. I'm the product. They go, why are you always promoting yourself? I'm the product that's for sale. I will have people watch me on this show and comment to me that I'm self-promotional. I go, well, you're buying the product by watching it right now. I'm the product. <laughs> I'm promoting the product. I'm the product. I'm just honest about it. Other people aren't. They won't will they're not willing to, you know. I'm a promoter of self because I'm the product that's for sale. And so um The reason it comes off differently 
by other people is because they are representing another product. For instance, when you see a newscaster, well, he's promoting the channel he's on. And they're using him to sell their product. When you see a celebrity endorsing a soft drink, a candy, a makeup, or whatever, they're promoting that product. But see, we now are in a completely different type of medium, which is where I'm not promoting YouTube. I'm using YouTube as a platform to promote me. And here you are. So that's why. Let's see. Oh, you got cut. I have no idea why you did. I don't even know your name. I don't know, you know, I have no idea what your name is. I guess you're putting, that's a website is your name. I have two pages. I have my personal Facebook page and then I have it, my public video Bob Mosley page. Everyone is welcome to go like and follow the video Bob Mosley page on Facebook and on Twitter and Instagram and everything. Those are public pages. I have a private Facebook page that I try to keep only my friends on. Like, for instance, I've been living here in Las Vegas now for the last three years. When people from um, Dallas try to friend me now, I generally don't accept them. I don't, want, I don't need any friends from Dallas. I'm not going to visit you. We're not hanging out. If I didn't know you already, I don't need to know you now. <laughs> I'm never going to hang out with you. So, like, I'll admit that. Like, I, I don't, you know, it's like, I, I, I don't, I'm trying to filter out the noise. Like, there's too much, there's too much noise. I have a, over a hundred and, you know, if you added up my various pages, it's over a hundred thousand friends. I don't know you people. I, I talk to like five people. I talk to Paul. I talk to Eric. Talk to Joey. I don't talk to that many people. Neither do you. I'm never going to meet or talk to any of these people. Oh, I met you once in a bar. Okay. So follow. If you, if you enjoy living vicariously through me, just, you know, you can follow. You know, I posted the picture so you could see it. Look at it. You can comment on it. Great. But as far as being like friends, you know, people use that word way too loosely, friend. Even acquaintance. I mean, I'm talking about people I've never met and never gonna meet. So when somebody from like, you know, Michigan or something's trying to friend me, I'm like, why? Why do I need to know you? Do I need to know you? No, we're never gonna talk. And then they're just gonna send me an innocuous message. You know, I like your car. Okay, thanks. So you go, oh, all right. So that's why I have my fan page. So people go, why do you have a Video Bob page and then why you have the Robert Mosley page? Well, because I, I have my public life and then I have a private life. My private life are the people that I actually know. And I do actually know like a thousand people. Crazy enough. I get out a lot. It's not that I'm trying to be a dick or anything. It's just that like, you know, I, I, I don't believe in phony and fake relationships. If I talk to you, then, then you know, I, I, I either like you or we're doing business. Now, if you want to send me like a business message, I want to buy a car from you or whatever, I want to hire you something, okay, great. We'll have a dialogue. But other than that, like, I don't have pen pals. <laughs> it's like, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, Paul says, Paul's a blues brother. I hate people come up to quote the Blues Brothers movie like I'm not familiar with it. That's exactly right. Like I'll have some f fucking dork dressed as Marty McFly either email me or come up to me in person and start giving me trivia about Back to the Future or quotes. Or like I'll be, I'll be at a car show with the actual car and people will come up to me and start giving me, hey, did you know? You're kidding. Like the one I hate the most is when I'm driving one of the cars and people pull up alongside of me and honk the horn. 
and yell at me. And they're like, nee, 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 nee. back to the future! Nee, 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 nee. Back to the future! I'm like, oh my god, you're kidding! I thought that this was a Kia! How did this happen? I just, yo, Ghostbuster! Ghostbusters! What? I always play, I always play stupid like, they're like, oh my god, back to the future. I go, what? Oh, uh, I got this at Hertz. Hertz rent a car. They were all out of Ford Tauruses and Camrys. They said this was the last car left, and I just got the, it's a what? A the what? What? Here's one of these things that drives me nuts. Oh, Paul says, how about the asshole that drives up next to you, slows down, tries to create a jab to get a picture of the car? Well, that happens all the time. Um, it's funny. I got to get off here. I've been on for way too long. I always say I'm only going to be on for a half hour, an hour, and then it's an hour and a half. I swear to God, this is the best shit. Can only get it at Sam's. It's strawberry lemonade. It's the goddamn most delicious drink I think I've ever had in my life. I just drink this thing. I drink cases of this. Sugar free. It's probably giving me cancer, but you know what? I love it. This is completely off the subject of everything we were talking about, but I was just thinking about this. You know these people that have to narrate the entire landscape? They just blurt out the obvious. They read every billboard. They, they announce the time, temp, and location everywhere you are. Hi, ah, it's, 12, it's 12.30. It's warm out. Oh, look, Ford. Ah. Jack in the box. Yep, it's hot. Oh, it's almost 1 o'clock. Like, they just got to fucking narrate the scene. Shut up! <laughs> like, yeah, we get it. They just read billboards. They just look at stuff. Oh, look. Hardee's. Ah, oh, look, a Whataburger. McDonald's. Look, a Lincoln. A Lincoln Continental. Cadillac. It's almost one. Ooh. Ah, 72 degrees. So it's like, what the fuck? Just shut up. <laughs> Stop talking. <laughs> and with that, I'm going to get the hell out of here. I've been on here way too long for a Tuesday. See you next Tuesday. Subscribe to Video Bob because I know where you live, bitch. Hi, gang. It's Gallagher. I want you to smash that Video Bob button and be a subscriber.